Well, here we are working on the Camaro, about to change the oil pan gasket. Now, this car is leaking oil. That's why we are gonna change it. And as you see, I have this support bar. Picked this up on Facebook Marketplace for like half the price of what it actually is, so that was a score. So we're gonna use this to support the engine, get under it, and do what we gotta do. So down here, you can see the oil pan's wet, and this is an active drip. This is where it drips from. And I've wiped this down several times, and it keeps coming back, so that's how I know I have an active drip. And it's all coated around. You've seen the other videos. It's just wet all around the oil pan. I've cleaned up the front here to confirm that it's not leaking out of the front, like not the front seal or the timing cover. I don't see anything up top, so I know it's not that. Narrowed it down to the oil pan, so we're going to swap this out of uh, the gasket here. I've already gone ahead and taken off the starter. I loosened this inspection cover back here, and I took a look. And if you see in here, the flywheel, the inside of the flywheel that faces the engine is completely dry. And that tells me it is not the rear main seal. Or at least it's very likely not the rear main seal. So we see oil pulling off the back of the oil pan dripping down. So that tells me the leak is actually the oil pan gasket leaking, most likely on the back or the sides, and it just pulls down here. So that's why we're not tackling the rear main seal. Maybe we'll do it in the future if it ever becomes a problem, but as of now, I believe this is our problem. Now I've also sprayed down both of the exhaust collectors with uh, penetrating fluid. There's two bolts on each side, and this is gonna determine what kind of job this is gonna be, whether it's gonna be a rough one or hopefully smooth, we'll see. So hopefully these bolts come out without breaking. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a go. And so the way we're gonna get this is I'm gonna hit it with the torch. I already soaked it overnight with penetrating fluid, but I'm gonna hit it with the torch now to just heat up like the head and the metal right here on this flange. And then I'm gonna take my impact and on the lowest torque, just hit it a couple times. Let the impact shock it a couple times. And I'll do that for a good like 15, 20 seconds before I start bumping up the torque to eventually try to bump it out all the way. I wanna get it out with my impact gun, not by hand. The shock is what's gonna free it. If I do it by hand, I greatly risk uh, just breaking it off. Got the oil draining right now. As you can see, I did manage to get all four bolts off. That is huge, without breaking them. So drain the oil now before I drop this down and this gets my way. Uh, and then we'll drop this down and I don't know how far we can actually hang it down, where we have to move it. Hope I don't have to connect the cat because then that's just another set of bolts that I won't want to break. We'll see. I think we can just slide it down. Um, yeah, so next up, I know we're going to have to get the sensor out. That's what the books say. Got this clip out with the 90 degree pick to just loosen it up. You see the slot here that you just stick it out of. Uh, and then I loosen this with a 30 millimeter socket. I uh, don't know what actually size it is. 30 was a little big, but it worked. Uh, it's not on there tight because this is just plastic. So this is the oil level sensor. Has an O-ring on it, so we'll make sure that that O-ring is in good condition when we put it back. And it just looks like a big plunger. We pull that out, set it off to the side. And there we go. I don't know why, but it said to do that, otherwise you could damage it, so. So I ended up taking the white pipe out completely. I don't think you have to, but I foolishly dropped a bolt into one of these, uh, the passenger side, so I had to get it out, so whatever. The clamp in the back did not come off. It did not want to come off at all, so I just cut it off. Um, and it, it's in a pretty good straight spot, so we'll be able to reattach it or do whatever we want if we want to put a cat pack exhaust on it now. But I got the engine raised up a bit. We got the driver's side motor mount out. As you see, um, this is where we are, so disconnect this before you do that. You might break it. Luckily, I didn't, so all good there. We're almost touching the firewall. Once we get that side off, we'll raise it up even more. Let's see if I can show you down here. So this is the driver's side motor mount. This is the easiest one to get to. And so you just take out the through bolt, put a wrench on the back side because it's a bolt and a nut. Uh, and then I got it out, jacked the engine up a little bit, and then I tightened my support bar up top. And I'll show you as I do that on the passenger side. Here's the passenger motor mount. This side's a different story. The through bolt 
hits the AC compressor. So we won't be able to remove that unless we remove the AC compressor. And I don't really want to do all that. So instead, what I'm going to attempt to do is, you see, there's four bolts that bolt the motor mount to the subframe or the K member here. I'm going to try removing those four bolts, the one you see on the right, and there's one on the left in this little cubby. And yeah, there's four of them. So I'm gonna try removing those, see if that does the same trick here. Passenger side motor mounts out. Got the jack supporting the oil pan just a little bit, not much. And then we can come up top and tighten these down. And I got them tightened as good as I can get them. And the engine's up quite a bit. It can go up a tiny bit more, but this should be good enough. Gotta change my glove. Um, and now we should be ready to start taking the bolts off the oil pan and see what else we have to get rid of. We might need to lower the K-member just a little bit. I took the bolt out of the steering shaft. Um, it, it's still in the splines, but it will come out if it needs to come out. Uh, I loosened the K-member bolts. There's six in total. As you see, loosened up. Not too loose, but there's enough thread to where it could fall down and the bolt will hold it up. Uh, we'll see if we have to go lower. And then the, the K-member is still being supported by the shocks, um, sway bar, control arm, whatnot. So we might need to loosen the sway bar, maybe, um, and probably the, the top of the shock towers. But I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the bolts for the oil pan. They're 10 millimeters. There's a ton of them. Let's take them off, get the oil pan uh, disconnected, and then let's see if we need to go lower. Okay, I take that back. They're not 10 millimeter, they're 3 8 They're Imperial. This must have been uh, the era when they did Imperial on the engine, but metric on the body of the car. <laughs> okay, taking it off. As you see, I got the oil pan dropped, all the bolts are out. Uh, it's super easy to take the bolts out, thankfully. Nothing really too difficult to get to. I was able to use an impact on almost all of them. Uh, and here we go. So this gasket also acts or doubles as a windage tray. So that's why you see this black plastic stuff on the bottom. So we got multiple things going on. Um, so now let's see if I can fish this pan out of here. It's resting on the K-member, I believe. Either that or the pickup. We are as low as I can get the subframe, so I started undoing the top shock bolts. Uh, so the front two are nuts, the back two are bolts. Now take a look at this passenger side. This passenger side, for some reason, has Torx bits on the back. And this one that you can't see is directly under the master cylinder for the brakes. So I can't access it at all so I can't lower this anymore and I think if I can get undo that that will give me just enough room because it's almost there almost ready to get the old pan dropped so I think I'm gonna have to take off the master cylinder right here it's just two bolts we'll find out real quick if the master cylinder is bad because it will leak fluid but so it shouldn't leak fluid if it's good so two bolts, undo that. Uh, might, there might be a pin in the way that we'll have to undo and then slide this out. So got the master cylinder loose, disconnected the ABS, ABS bracket. It's just two nuts. And slid it out of the way, so the master out of the way. It gave me access to these, uh, the two Torx ones back here. So I loosened everything up, took a couple of the cross member bolts out, especially in the rear. Put my jack on the bell housing of the transmission to raise up the back of the engine a little bit more. And that gave me enough room to slide it out. Now it's tight fit. It was fighting against the dust cover here. So if you were removing the transmission too, it'd be a lot simpler. You wouldn't have to drop the K-member as much. But because I was, I had to drop the K-member just enough to where you take the pan, the back of it, you dip that the back side out and the front needs to just ever so slightly clear so once you get it low enough to go underneath the transmission here this cover here then that's when you you know you're good and it just fits on out so we got it all out and here's the pan so inspecting it it's just caked in oil all the way along the edges and you know it's soaked 
here. Like right here, you see the gasket seam, but you see oil behind it. Pretty confident it was the oil pan leaking. And so here we go. I pried it out with my pry bar to break that glue seal because it was glued in. We still got some more on the back. Okay, there we go. That should be all of it. Now we just have to fish it out of here. It's, as you see, it's pretty tight. Oh, I just busted it. Okay, I think we have to remove this, the pickup to get it out. All right, got the pickup removed. It was a five eighths and then pulling this on out. Okay, let me put this somewhere so it doesn't make a mess. All right, here we go. Here's the underside. And so this is my first time seeing the bottom of the engine here and actually seeing rods other than at the junkyard when they're all easily torn apart. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, everything seems to be good. Now, I'll feel the rods obviously and just make sure everything's tight, but this engine sounded fine, so I, I don't have any concerns. Other than we gotta scrape off a bunch of material here and reseal it. Finally received in the mail this gasket here. Now this is a OEM GM gasket for the oil pickup tube. This is the one that came up in the kit. I don't really like it. It's, it's just paper. This one kind of has that orange RTV-ish silicone seal to it just just help it and this is a very very important seal if it leaks you lose oil pressure so i just want to double triple check make sure i'm really good so that's why i ordered the gm one the oem one took a while to come here but ordered it in hindsight should have ordered it before i started tearing things apart but now let's get back to plugging this in put an oil pan back on all right, I have the oil pan gasket here all cleaned up. I got this tub of Ultra Black RTV, put it in my caulk gun, and I'm just gonna lay a thin bead all along the blue here just to add the extra protection. Now, there was a technical service bulletin to saying to do exactly this. So that is what we are gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna start in this corner here. I think this will be the easiest one to catch up on. I'll just go all the way around like this. Just a nice thin bead. It's supposed to be about a quarter inch. I think we're just under that, but that's okay. Okay, I think that's good. Now let's go under. Just put the oil pan gasket in here. You see it acts as the witness tray because it's all one piece. So it's in there, it's glued in, gonna let it kind of get tacky and whatnot. I got two bolts on it just to lightly seat it in place so it's not gonna go anywhere. Now let's throw the pickup tube on. Then we can take the bolts out, put the oil pan on. Same thing, put RTV on this side. Now we're gonna sandwich it up. And we should be good. As you can see, we got seepage for the RTV. So we fully torqued everything down. We torqued it to about 125 inch pounds and got it evenly, did the crisscross pattern, and we should be good now. And up here in the front of the pan, again, you can see some of the RTV. Not really an excessive amount. I feel like this is fine. You know, there's a little. A little much in the front but I think overall uh, that was a pretty decent job with the RTV and everything is sealed all around so I gotta let it sit like this for a couple days before I can get back to it but we'll be back real quick putting the K member back up and everything else 
So I have the K-member all bolted up. I torqued it down and I bolted the brake master cylinder back up. The front shock towers, those are back up. And I think we're good to ready to start lowering the engine and trying to line up the motor plates, the motor mounts down there. That's probably going to be a little tricky, um, but first things first, let's get the jack off the transmission to lower the backside, and then we can lower the rest of the engine. We still have about two or three inches to go. The transmission jack is out, so the only thing supporting the engine up is this bar. Now, this bar is thankfully easy enough to turn. I just got to hold this still, which doesn't take too much force, but I just lower it down and it's coming and I'm just going from side to side trying to do as even as possible. I made sure the steering shaft is out of the way. It was tucked up under the mount so that would have been good but it's out of the way now. So underside shot you can see how far off we are. I just got to keep lowering it till it lines up but then I'm also going to have to just play with the engine. I'm going to have to maneuver it into the hole to line up and then throw the through bolt through. As you can see, just got done playing musical cars. The Camaro's all back together. Everything is good. Now all that is, we just gotta drive it. We got a couple weeks until our first event coming up. So we're just gonna do some shakedown city driving and whatnot, commuting, and just see how it does. But that's all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.